Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The Insane Footies content keeps rolling, but it's really putting us between a rock and a hard place with SBC Fodder. And today I just want to open the conversation up a little bit to EA Sports and say, hey guys, I think that you need to supply fodder on this game because our clubs are getting thin. And if you're going to give us SBCs to go and do at this stage of the game and allow us to have fun, then please don't make the cards that we need to do these SBCs, the fodder that we need to do these SBCs, go astronomically up in price, especially that lower tier of fodder, which is usually really cheap, but it's going up like crazy because of all this great content. I just think we need some more supply. So we'll talk about that a little bit, but also how it could go even higher today with a re-release of a 93 plus shapeshifters player pick that we had last week on Tuesday. Now this required a little bit more of the middle to high tier fodder, not just your 83s, your 84s, but you know, 85s, 86s, 87s is going to be required for this if it's re-released. We'll talk more about that for today's content on Tuesday and look back at yesterday with EA dropping an objective that seems a bit grindy, but actually does help you get some fodder into your club. Since that's kind of the biggest like point of this game right now is needing the SBC cards to do SBCs. I felt like it was very appropriate to bring up this topic today and, and just kind of have a conversation how I think EA could even go about this a little bit better. And also maybe some ways where you might be able to get fodder cards in your club through a couple different methods on the game right now. So if you're excited for today's video, hit the thumbs up on it. And of course, subscribe if you're new. Now, what's the problem with fodder, right? This is what we were talking about. And it's not like that all cards in this game are super expensive, because if we go take a look at 91 rated cards or 90 rated cards at like 20, 22K, that's not bad. That's actually really, really good. You're like, Nate, why are you saying fodder is overpriced then? It's these cards. The 83s, the 84s are the ones that are too expensive because everybody gets the high rated fodder right now from packing these special cards. All of the 150 special cards that are in packs for footies batch two, we're all packing them, right? We love doing the 85 times 10 because we get uh, like five to six special cards almost or more in every single one of these and it's just fun and it's good value, right? It is, it really is. But in order to do that, we're turning some of those cards that we got last time from the 85 times 10, maybe a 90 rated card, maybe an 88 or an 89. And then we're filling out the rest of that squad with like 83s, 84s and 85s. I think EA needs to do a better job at supplying these on the market. And I think there's some really easy ways where they could do it. First of all, just drop a daily player SBC. I'm sorry, not a, not a player, a daily pack SBC. We have had some of these, right? We had like the Dream Team SBC here that gave us a tradable gold players pack, a two gold players pack. Like that's kind of nothing, right? Like, you know, on a Wednesday, we'll get like a footy, vo footies voting day pack, right? We'll have something along those lines. But if they were dropping an SBC every single day that gave out a 25k pack or a 35k pack, maybe even a 45k pack, nothing super crazy, but something like that would just be huge for the market because it would supply 82s, 83s, 84s a lot from that tradable supply. That's what we need right now. There's so many packs that are giving out untradable fodder that you have to go and play games for. One of three 84 plus player picks and objectives, all that stuff, but we need tradable fodder. That's what's gonna make the prices go down on the market. So I think that's one way that they could do it. You know what? And we haven't had this, this, we haven't had this in such a long time in this game, but preview packs. Preview packs, EA Sports. Just imagine a, a 25,000 coin preview pack. Basically make this one a preview pack so that you can open it for free. You know what? Let me just open one of the coins and see what it looks like. Let's say I just open this for free as a preview pack. Bang, I get a special card because it's footies, right? And this is what happens. This 89 rated Chiesa is how much on the market? 19,000 coins. If I just got this from my preview pack, which would probably be a decently average pack to get, boom. I'm going and buying that pack. I'm going to sell some of the other content that are in this pack. I got two other 82s and 82 right now will sell for over 2000 coins on the market. You know what? I'm actually going to sell these cards and take the cash because we literally just profited on a preview pack or on a 25k pack that we opened from the store. So 19k for Chiesa, bang, and Dombele. I'm going to list this up for like 2000 coins. And then I'm going to list up this Campania for like 2000 coins. And I literally have just made my money back and all the rest of these cards in here that I send to my club or then go ahead and list up are uh, free, right? Or, 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 you know, are straight profit. All gold rares are 1.5K. Some of these guys might go for something or other right now. But that's the sort of thing that I think would make that fodder, the lower tier, 
drop a cheap preview pack that is not that expensive that people can actually afford it when they uh, pack something good from it and want to buy it or just daily tradable pack SBC. It's not that hard and the SBC prices wouldn't have to be like paying 4k like even look at some of these graphs man every single day or every single time the 85 times 10 either drops or refreshes. L look at what happens. Let's just click on like Timo Werner right here, right? Timo Werner right now is like 7k, 6.5k. He just got undercut right there. He's like 6.7k. You know, he goes to 6k every night on yesterday. Boom, from 6 point whatever K all the way to 8,000 coins. Sunday, what does he do? 6K, boom, goes to 8K. Shoot, you might be looking at this and like, Nate, I can trade with these cards on the daily. You can basically trade with these cards every single day uh, because every single day we're getting good content. Fodder spikes right after, you know, 6, 7, 8 p.m. UK time when everybody's on doing the SBCs and then it goes down in the nighttime when there's that little bit of tradable supply and less demand that kind of is happening on the market and these cards drop a little bit. So all I'm saying is if we had a tradable pack supply SBC every day, I think it would make the fodder market be a lot more bearable and 83s would be like 1.5k to 2k and 84s would still be about four and a half to five thousand coins and that would just help so much at this stage of the game because every single day when you're getting on and you're paying like 8k for an 84 it just seems ridiculous and i think that's a i agree with that and i think it's you know ea is trying to let us have fun with the footies content and i love the job they're doing releasing great sbcs i think the value is even pretty good with the inflated fodder prices that are out there on the low tier um, but I just think they could do just a little bit better in enabling us to, uh, have more people that would be able to get involved with the content if they made it just a little bit cheaper or easier to get that fodder. So that's just my opinion. But once again, we saw fodder move yesterday. Like I said, with that 85 times 10 being released, it was not released repeatable to our dismay, but I will say one, I guess slight win is that it's now going to be repeatable on Wednesday instead of Thursday. So only a two day cooldown time instead of a three day cooldown from last week. Now that alongside of our other upgrade packs that were released yesterday, a little bit interesting on these upgrade packs. I mean, I'm not gonna be grinding these that much, but the, what is it? The 60 to 64 times five and the 71 to 74 triple upgrade. If you're grinding these, then I respect it because there's absolutely a time and place for these right now. The 71 to 74 triple upgrade is really nice if you're trying to do the 75 times five. Personally, though, I think the best grind is still with these two, the common gold triple upgrade and the 82 plus player pick. These 82 plus player picks are cracked. They are so good. And I know they cost like 10,000 coins to do per pack because of how expensive gold rares are, like 1.4, 1.5K. But these are so, so, so good. You get a lot of great usable cards and a lot of great fodder out of these at the same time. So I'm still doing these. I'm still trying to pack as many high rated specials as I can to go and do the campaign player picks. I did both of the Brazilian icon SBCs. Um, I haven't done all of the player picks yet. I need to do a couple more. Like I haven't done the regular icon moments player pick. And especially if we look into today, if we're getting another 93 plus shapeshifters player pick, which I think would be my top guess for what could be content today would be another one of these player picks. Um, Get your 87, get your 88s ready, store those 90 rated cards up or maybe a 91 or a 92. And then even as, as I'm watching this video and or, or, or making this video and you're watching this video and we're looking at guys like that Timo Werner who we, we saw go to 8,000 coins yesterday. But right now he's what, 6.3K? Like, you know, 5.4 on a little bit of a snipe. Like get involved with a few of these things, man. Like send a couple cards to the club. When you see, when you're watching this video and if you're looking at fodder prices and they're back down to like 6K, for whatever reason, you know, this is just kind of like the lack of demand. And a lot of people are getting on FIFA right now at, you know, only the content drop time. And it's not like these cards are really over invested. When you go on the market, it's it's just, you know, a little bit of supply that's trickling in here or there. You've got people that are maybe finishing their weekend leagues right now too, since we've had the extended time frame. Go ahead and pick a few of these cards up, honestly. That way you have them in your club. These 84s at like the low 6K range, especially the ones that bounce the most because of having chemistry. You know, look at the cards that went to 8K yesterday. 8.1K for ZH, right? 6.2 is where he was. He's 6.8 right now. I just bought a Timo Werner as well. I'm setting myself up nice for some SPC links for tomorrow or for today. ZH, boom, 6.8. Okay, there's a few more than that. You know, 6.6, I'm going to snag one, put it in the club because A, I'm getting ready for an SBC to use them tomorrow or B, if I want to sell them, 
I can sell them. And it's not big profits. If you're buying for like six and a half K and selling for eight K, it's not that big a profit. But if you buy a lot of these, if you really want to go in and try to make that sort of flip, then you can. It's not going to work every day, but especially on the 85 times 10 days, I would say that's where you're going to see those biggest fluctuations in price on the market. Now, I will say about this too today, if they do a 93 plus, that's again a little bit more of the middle to high tier fodder. That's not, that's less of the 84s, 85s being required. Uh, they still will be though, because again, you think about what you have in your club right now, what I have in my club, I have a lot of like, 92, 91, 90 rated specials. And I'm gonna put those into this squad and then I'm gonna fill it in with some 86s, 85s, 84s, right? So those cards still will probably go up a little bit today, but I think with just one 87 rated squad with that um, 85 times 10, that's gonna make those cards move up more. And also this SBC just has plain more hype than a 93 plus shapeshifters would for most people on the game. So when this gets re-released on Wednesday, I would say on Wednesday, watch out for those fodder cards maybe spiking up a little bit. We'll have a look at that in tomorrow's video. But even at the price that they are right now, it's not that bad of a gamble. Either you're going to stock your club and get an SBC done easier today by buying the fodder in the morning uh, before the content comes out, or you're going to make some coins selling it after 6 p.m. Now, one, you know, some guys have been asking me the question, Nate, could they upgrade this SBC today to make it a 95 shapeshifters player pick? I think that's a little bit, just a little bit too early. I would love it. I'm not come, I'm not saying that I don't want it to happen. I just think it might be a little bit early for them to release a 95 plus shapeshifter. Maybe it's going to be a 93 plus again today. Um, and this was what, like a one of three? Maybe they'll make it one of four or something like that. I, I don't exactly know, but I would expect some other sort of gamble SBC today on Tuesday as a part of our content. Now, really quickly, speaking of fodder, one way that you can go and grind it out and try to get a few more fodder cards is doing a footies gold and silver select. It's grindy, like I said. It does take a bit of effort, but it's out for two weeks and it's only seven wins on both the silver and the gold side. And it's not that difficult to get done. The hardest part is actually finding a match if you're in the silver mode, because most people want to do this because they have what? The silver uh, series cards from earlier on this year, like the Royce, the KDB, the Pogba. And a lot of people aren't going out and buying gold teams right now to play in the footies gold select mode because the, the gold matches up against the silver and then you play the game, right? That's how this works. But I think this is a W. You get an 85 times five at the end for the, um, for the silver select, which is the more desirable of the two. But I think doing both of these, if you're gonna grind the menus right now, is not a bad place at all to get some fodder. So definitely be watching out for that or, or putting the time in there if you want to be. And then continue, as I said in yesterday's video, check your club for bronze commons, silver commons. Uh, you can turn them into this common gold triple upgrade, then go and buy just a few rares and get the 82 plus player pick done and dusted. And that's pretty easy. Or if you have silver rares, turn them into the 75 plus times five. And then you get yourself some golds and some rares and maybe some high rated players from that as well. Those are kind of the best ways to get fodder at the moment. Also entering that conversation a little bit more league SBCs, although some of them are expiring. So you have to be very careful with like the time here. Like you don't want to start the uh, economy bowl Libertadores league SBC, forget about it. And then it's gone, right? You don't want to leave one of these halfway done, but some of these do give out some decent packs and they're tradable. And at the moment with all the silver and the bronze cards that you can get from upgrade packs or even being pretty cheap on the market since they're not in demand that much, I would, I would really, really look into it. If you're on a low budget and you're trying to build up some coins, it's, a, you know, you're putting your luck in EA's hands with the pack weight, but with all 150 cards that are in packs right now, it's, there's never been a better time to go and try to grind some league SBCs on a low budget, try to find the ones that have, you know, pretty cheap prices, use Footbin, go onto the Footbin website right here, go into the SBC tab up here at the top, click that little drop down, click active challenges, click on leagues, and then just kind of filter through here and see, okay, the Super League SBC 34K, do I get a good pack on that? Okay, it's just average. Serie A's 32,000 coins, and I think you get a pretty good pack at the end. A prime gold players pack, and then a lot of the other packs in between are tradable. Some of them are untradable, so you have to keep an eye out for that. But, you know, La Liga is one that I think a decent amount of people do um, as well. Thumbs up wise, it looks like Serie A and La Liga have some of the best thumbs up, but there's a lot of down votes on these, which is kind of interesting. I think people just missed back in the day when you got League SBC cards. And I know this hasn't been a thing in a while, but like, remember doing the League One SBC back in like FIFA 18 or 19, and you got like an insane Cavani 
as like a legit card as the end reward from doing a league SBC back when league SBCs were more than four sections. But I think these are decent ways to, you know, buy a few bronze and silvers, use cards in your club if you have any, do some of these, and then have a chance at opening some packs, which is A, fun, and B, potential to profit off of the tradable ones uh, and, and get some cards and then make coins off of that. So that's one way that you can be trying to grind the menus right now that if you're trying to get some fodder and coins, that's a way to do it as well, just because that's going to give you packs. And there's great stuff in packs right now. You never know what you could hit. All of a sudden, you hit a 92 rated card that's worth 30K, and boom, you're in business. So that's the sort of thing that could be really grindable at this stage. And like I mentioned, clearing out your club with all the upgrade packs that are out there. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the menu content, right? I mean, the SBCs are still rolling. It's still great. It's still awesome to have all this content. Yesterday as well, we cannot go without saying we had a pretty big Moments Icon SBC released. This is a big one for a lot of people. Moments Hullet. I mean, and I, I think EA priced this SBC very well. I do. And I know some of you guys will disagree. You're like, Nate, and, and I understand this argument. I made it on stream yesterday. I said, hey, why would you go and craft this Rude Hullet for 2 million coins is what the SBC is coming in at right now. 2 million coins to craft this Rude Hullet, which is a deal, by the way, because this guy's card on the market on PlayStation and Xbox was well over his 2 million coin SBC cost. Uh, but a card like this on the game that is still like, you know, 2.5 mil on the market, um, why would you go and spend 2 million coins worth of fodder unless you really love Hullet and it's just an end game player that you want to go and grind and craft, which I understand there's nothing wrong if, with that if you want to do that. But when a guy like Jude Bellingham, who's arguably better than a Rude Hullet, is 140k, at this stage of the game for being club 90 in FIFA and, you know, insanely good card. If you haven't packed him yet, just open 82 plus player picks. You'll probably get him at some point. His pack weight is ridiculously high. I mean, comparing these two together with the price difference, I would take the cheaper option and probably the better card all day long. But again, if you really want to hold it, I think you have great opportunities to craft it right now with the way that high rated fodder is so accessible. You know, you have 94 rated cards in packs that are 40,000 coins. That's crazy, right? You've got 93s at 33, 4,000 coins. You got 88 cards that are, you know, 17K. That's crazy how cheap some of this stuff is. So I do think it's a great time to craft. It's just like, okay, is it worth? 2 million coins can get you a lot of Brazil, you know, campaign player picks or a lot of mixture of like the Brazil icon player picks or 85 times 10s. Like you're, you can do this hold over time if you want to do that too. But just kind of thinking about, you know, the opportunity cost of putting all of that SBC fodder worth into a card like that. You know, there's plenty of options with cards in this game right now that are, of course, a little bit past the power curve of even where a hull it is in this game. So that's just kind of something to think about after yesterday's content right there. But again, not too many big complaints about that because it is a pretty big icon moments player SBC. That's like a top five player. For an icon moments, right? Rude Hullet. So we can't really complain about that too much because it's about freaking time EA Sports that you would release an SBC like that one. So of course his cards in the market are down big time. He was 3.4 mil before the leak. And before the SBC, he's literally down a million coins. I still think it would have made more sense to drop a Ronaldinho SBC. I still think, you know, it's the whole week of Brazil, right? Brazil Cup, all that good stuff. Ronaldinho would have been great. I think Pele, R9, maybe a bit too expensive. But uh, R10, you know, would have been perfect. So missed opportunity from EA Sports right there. Now, that, that gets me on the train, hype train and, and thought train about Brazilian cards just a little bit more. And, and this is the same thing that we talked about last week with the Premier League cards, right? Remember last week with the Premier League, how the Premier League Cup was so hype and everybody was doing it and all this stuff, right? And how a lot of those Premier League cards dropped off afterwards. I think it's going to be the same and even more significant this week for some of your Brazilian cards that have gone up in price in the last couple of days, because I think this Brazil Cup has more hype than the Premier League Cup did last week, just because I think it's a little bit easier for people to get these Brazil cards in their clubs. They might already have them. And the SBC content this week is even better than last week. So in my personal opinion, I believe 
that this week you will see some bigger sell-offs on some of those Brazilians, maybe some of the TOTS cards that people had to go and buy. Cards that I'm specifically thinking of are ones that have done really, really well in the past couple of days in terms of price rises or fluctuations. Remember I sold Militao for 400,000 coins on Friday night, right? This dude now is 340,000 coins, right? 345, Marquinhos is continuing to like slide down a price a little bit. I would really watch these cards. You know, 95 Allison is 80K. He, he like, he is 80,000 coins. I think he can continue dropping as well, even though he's 95 rated and uh, the Brazilian keeper that like everybody is using right now. Tiago Mendes is a card. This guy was al is already starting to drop. Remember, Tiago Mendes was 110,000 coins on a Friday night as well. And now he's what, 70K, 68,000 coins. Yeah, so he's dropping too. A lot of this stuff is just going to continue to go down and it's really going to hit a bottom. I think it's really going to drop this weekend. So I wouldn't be worried about selling it just yet, but I really think that as people finish up their Brazil Cup games on, what would it be, Thursday, right? Thursday will be the last day for this. Just kind of keep that in mind uh, that if you have any tradable ones, maybe you try to get by on your last couple of games if you can with an untradable card, um, just in case, you know, it might save you, you know, a couple hundred thousand coins, depending on how many cards you maybe have bought or you're trying out for this footies Brazil Cup. That's just kind of something to think about. And we'll talk more about it later on this week as we get further on towards another footies Friday with probably more packs, but the same cards are in packs. So more supply for those same items. But today on Tuesday is going to be a bit of an interesting day. Again, last week on Tuesday is when we had the Kings League Coman League. We had the 93 plus SS and then we had a league for Tiago Jalo as well. I'm genuinely curious to see what kind of leaks start coming out because it's pretty quiet on that front right now. We really don't have any leaked information about what's coming next or what this next week might be focused on. And we didn't really know about the Brazilian focus until like Wednesday into Thursday. So hopefully in the next day or two, we'll figure out what week three of footies might be all about. Just a quick little bit of information. Some of you guys that are maybe Serie A fans, this is, this is going to affect all of us if I'm being completely honest. A little bit of FIFA 23 information. EA tweeted out yesterday that Juve is officially back in FIFA 23. So no more Piemonte Calcio. It is going to be Juventus. Juventus is back with the official kits. You know, Pogba being at Juve, although I, I heard he's injured with a torn meniscus, so I hope he heals soon. I, I was excited to see him play in a Juve kit again, but it looks like Juve is back uh, with their official licensing and everything, and also a part of that in this video at the very end, you see a very small picture about a Marquisio, um, a Marquisio hero World Cup item right there, and here's a screenshot from a tweet on, on Twitter as well, the same thing. Um, this is the fourth officially confirmed hero card. Now, Marquisio has been in the leaks for a while. And even we remember like seeing Marquisio like, put on Instagram something about FIFA um, like months ago. And we thought he might even be added in FIFA 22, but he wasn't. He is going to be an official FIFA 23 hero, one of the ones that they're adding in. So we now have four heroes confirmed with uh, Yaya Torre, Park Jisung, Cavallo, and uh, Marquisio being officially confirmed so that's just kind of something to keep in mind too as we head towards FIFA 23 um and you know if you're a U of A fan all bodes well for you no more white shirts no more right white shirt Ronaldo Vlahovic anything along those lines we're actually going to have the legit Jeep kits and the UV kits back in the game so that's kind of exciting especially for the rights side of things GG's to EA Sports I guess on that one for picking that one back up. So we'll be streaming again today on Tuesday. I'm going to build more 82 plus player picks. My coins need to go under 10 million this week. Um, I got to spend some more coins on packs and hopefully pack some more sick cards in the process. The one thing I will say I like about a 93 plus shapeshifter is that you're doing a pack and you're going to be getting cards that are like at the peak of the power curve, right? Because shapeshifter is probably going to be our last promo this year of cards re-release back in uh before they release cards back in packs right shapeshifters was the end promo so you know it's kind of nice to know that you're doing the player pick for the like literally the end game best card so that's kind of nice but i know some people didn't try to get these done right away as they were focused on other things and i totally understand that but hopefully ea starts supplying that fodder just a little bit as well that would be very very nice for all of us trying to do spcs make it a little bit cheaper and easier to get those done let me know your thoughts down below in the comments as always but if you enjoyed today's video smash a thumbs up on it and a subscribe if you're new it's been nate the foot account and i'll catch you guys later peace out